Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Anbernic, and it turns out that Anbernic is going from gaming handhelds to gaming controllers, and they've just unveiled a brand new RGP01. Very interesting name. And if we take a look at it, it reminds me a lot of an 8-bit Doe Ultimate Wireless Controller, but I could be wrong there. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. There appear to be LEDs, Hall Effect joysticks, haptic feedback, and even more in this. So taking a look at the description here, and it says it's a cost-effective PC controller. It's fully compatible with PC, Steam, Switch, Android, iOS, and other platforms. It supports Bluetooth 5.3, 2.4G wireless, and wired connection. Furthermore, it's equipped with Hall Effect joysticks and Hall Effect triggers. It also features a built-in 6-axis gyroscope, vibration function. I might have been wrong by saying it's got haptic feedback. It may not have haptic feedback, and it doesn't seem like it's going to. I could be wrong, though. Software configurable ABXY layout swapping, semi-automatic and fully automatic turbo rapid fire, and wired upgrading capabilities. So there's quite a few features here, and I'm very curious about cost effective. Now, call me crazy, but to me, this thing feels very inspired by the 8-bit Doe Ultimate Wireless Controller. The face buttons are a little bit different here at the top, but at the same time, the D-pad seems very familiar, and well, the joysticks and buttons as well. But I guess I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Do you think this new Ambernick RGP01 is very similar to the 8-bit Ultimate Wireless or 8-bit Ultimate Bluetooth controller? Or do you think they're completely different here? And which one would you prefer based on your experience with Ambernick and based on your experience with 8-bit Doe? I'm very curious for the price of this one, and I think the price is going to dictate whether or not this controller succeeds or fails. Next up, we're talking about multi-system emulation with J-Genesis. J-Genesis is an emulator for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, Sega CD or Mega CD, Sega 32X, Sega Master System, Game Gear, NES, SNES, and Game Boy and Game Boy Color and J Genesis just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, J Genesis version 0.8.1 is the latest update. There's a whole bunch of bug fixes and some brand new features surrounding save states. For example, they added an option to attempt to load the most recently saved state when launching a game. And if this option is set when there are no save states or the most recent save state cannot be loaded, the game will boot normally. And I think a lot of people are going to like this option. And for the Sega Game Gear, they added an option to render it at Sega Master System resolution, so 256 by 192 instead of the native resolution of 160 by 144 J Genesis is 100% free and open source. And like everything I talk about, link for this will be in the description right at the bottom. Next up, we're talking about GameCube and Wii emulation on Android with Dolphin. Now, some people may see this update as a nothing update. Some people may see it as a brand new feature they're excited about. And truth be told here, I think a lot of people are just not going to notice it. Anyways, it is worth talking about. And on the dolphin-emu.org website, I'm noticing something else as well. They've got a link to the Stop Killing Games initiative. That's pretty cool. So for the update on Android here, they've added in a VSync setting. And Joss Juice says, I don't quite understand why enabling the VSync setting is helpful when Android already enforces VSync. But I guess having the option available doesn't hurt. I'm putting the setting under advanced, and unlike in Dolphin QT, since there's no clear reason why the typical user would want to use this setting. So I think that kind of is self-explanatory here. The setting is there, but it's not probably going to be useful for most people. And for the second update here, again, I don't think a lot of people are going to use this one, but hey, maybe you will. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. But they've added in the real balance board setting. So if you've got a balance board here and the Mayflash Dolphin bar, you can connect that to your phone and now enable it. Again, I don't think a lot of people are going to use this, but now the setting's there. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation with PCSX2. And if you've got a wheel on PC, you play racing games with PCSX2 and your wheel has force feedback you may be interested in this update. So with one of the latest updates to PCSX2 here, there's a workaround for force feedback dropouts with certain modern wheels. And those certain modern wheels will probably have direct drive, something like the Moza R5, R9, or something like that. So hopefully this workaround fixes a number of issues with force feedback direct drive wheels. 
And I think this person sums it up well. It may be something unavoidable based on the force feedback used for this game. It was designed in a time direct drives weren't a thing and everything was gear driven and that's kind of what it feels like now that it's emulating gears. So let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below if you do have a direct drive wheel and you've been having issues with PCSX2. Do you still get that jackhammer effect? Is it a lot better now? Next up, we're talking about the Pokemon Data Breach or the Pokemon Data Leak or the Game Freak Leak or as a lot of people are referring to it now as the Freak Leak. Anyways here, this just keeps producing a lot of information and stuff we had no idea about before. For example, an unreleased 2007 remake of Yoshi's Egg was developed by Game Freak and built into what would become Pokemon Black and White's engine. And they found this in the black and white source code leak. Honestly, I've got no idea why this was built into the game, why it was in the source code, and why it even exists, even for the assets to be in Pokemon black and white. But let me know if you know in the comments below. Feel free to check out the YouTube video showcasing the game in action. I've got no idea how long it's going to be up for. Next up, we're talking about Dino Crisis on the PS5. And based on comments I've seen online, it appears that Capcom is taking a big L on this one. It's not available to be purchased individually. It's only part of the PlayStation Plus premium subscription. That is the highest tier, and it's going to cost people quite a bit of money just to play this game. Now, based on what I've seen, it's generated a whole bunch of meme material online, and people who are not a member of PlayStation Plus premium are a little bit frustrated they can't play the game or even just buy it. It's very weird that it would be locked behind the highest tier for the PlayStation Plus subscription service, but I don't know, things have been weirder in the past. But I don't know here, let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Personally, I think this comment here is right on the money. The worst thing about it is many people will now not download it and play it because of this stuff. And Capcom will just say, see, there is no interest in Dino Crisis, and I would agree with that. So hopefully Capcom sees these comments on the internet and tries to find a way to make this game purchasable by people who want to give them money. It's not necessarily a foreign concept here or something hard to understand. But moving on, and next up is a quick heads up if you're a fan of Fallout 76. There is a very special Fallout Day broadcast on October 23rd, so just in a few days here. They say get a sneak preview of our new content in Fallout 76 and catch some developer interviews. After the broadcast, celebrate with our friends over at Fallout for Hope for their community parade. So if you're a fan of Fallout or a fan of Fallout 76, you may want to check this one out. And speaking about updates, next up here we're talking about Hades 2. Now Hades 2 is currently in early access and it's already receiving free updates. The Olympic update is now live and promises some more stuff to this game. Arguably, this update is pretty big. I mean, there's a brand new region. There's a brand new weapon called the Black Coat. There's brand new decorations, new allies, new animal familiars, new challenges, new voice lines, 2,500 of them. And this game now works on Apple M1 chips or later. Now for full transparency, I haven't played Hades 2 yet. There's still so much left for me to do in Hades 1 and I don't want to keep buying games and adding them to my backlog without completing others first. I mean, I'll probably still do it anyways, but I try not to. Anyways, this game is doing very well on Steam. It's got a very positive review score with over 40,000 reviews. If you play Hades 2, let me know your thoughts about this update in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about Winamp, and Winamp's source code has been pulled from GitHub. Now, the whole release of the source code here has been, well, it's been a little bit rocky. They say it went open source, but technically really wasn't. It was source available. But they're basically letting people contribute to their source code without forking it or distributing it outside of the official repository. So from my understanding here, it just seemed like they wanted people to help continue on Winamp without paying them. So as a quick timeline here, when Winamp source code was initially released, it had a Winamp collaborative license, which banned forking, which means you can't fork this and make improvements to it. You could only improve the original code base. And then they changed the license to allow forking, but prohibited the distribution of modified versions, which again, doesn't make any sense for something on GitHub. Now, on top of all of that, one of the big problems with Winamp's source code is that it's reported it contained shoutcast DNAS code, as well as code from Intel and Microsoft. 
and you can't release that source code without their permission. So that's probably one of the big reasons the source code was removed off GitHub here. But at the same time, this whole thing has just been a massive mess. To be honest with you, I've got no idea what's going to happen with this Winamp source code moving forward. If they're going to try to re-release it with that stuff moved out or what the heck they're going to try to do here. But since something was put on the internet, good luck taking it off the internet. I'm assuming this project has been forked and that source code is going to be forever online. Let me know your thoughts about this entire kerfuffle in the comments below. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about an unreleased Super Mario 64 DS ROM hack. This one is called Super Mario The New Beginning. And based on a new trailer that's popped up on YouTube, the developer has picked this one up again and is working on it. Now, I could be wrong here, but if I'm not mistaken, this ROM hack was released a while back. Anyways, they say this ROM hack has 110 stars and 10 main courses in total. Originally created by Rafa4k, updated and maintained by ICUP321. And all this information and everything about this ROM hack is up on Game Banana. And last up here, we're talking about Nintendo Switch Flash Cart and MIG Switch competitor Unlock Switch. And Unlock Switch, we talked about a while back when they were switching to crypto for their purchases. And it appears that that backlash has been heard by the company and, well, they're looking at different options. So they say here, this matter was not initially a focus prior to the sales launch. However, as we advanced in this phase, our live session revealed a recurring interest in our available payment solutions. Unfortunately, we were caught off guard by disruptive behavior and persistent attacks by a small number of individuals. Regrettably, we engaged with these provocations, which compromised the level of professionalism we aim to maintain. We sincerely apologize for our handling of the discussions regarding cryptocurrency payments. Rather than addressing the community's legitimate concerns, our communication shifted towards social media exchanges which was not the appropriate response, you think. Now, to unlock Switch's credit, they did listen to the online criticisms and they posted a poll online asking for people for the preferred method of payment. No surprise here, PayPal and credit cards were amongst the most popular options. So over 3,000 people voted in the poll and now unlock Switch has more payment methods. They've added credit or debit cards and PayPal. They're also not backing down from cryptocurrency. So production is already in progress. A lot of people are still asking whether or not this project is actually valid, if this is going to be a real thing or if this is just vaporware. Who knows here what's going to happen. The proof will be in the pudding once everything is all sorted out and people have their purchases. I'm on the fence on this one whether or not it's actually real or not based on what I've seen. But I have seen some people with production samples and I'm wondering, are those just one-off things or is this going to be sustainable moving forward? It's just very weird how long everything has taken for them. So let me know your thoughts about Unlock Switch in the comments below. Do you think this is a real thing? Do you think this is a real company? And with everything that's happened in the past, with the Unlock Switch controversies with Mix Switch versus Unlock Switch, do you think the product is actually going to see the light of day? But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. I'm trying out a brand new camera today. Let me know your thoughts about that one in the comments below. And we talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.